Hello physics family, today we're going to be reviewing vectors and looking at them graphically. What do they mean? All about it. Let's get into it. Just a quick reminder, friends, that vectors always have a magnitude, which means a number associated with them, and they also have a direction as well. We know vector quantities already like velocity, it has a speed and a direction. That means it has a number and also a direction as well. So keep that in mind. We're gonna be using vectors for a lot of different things, but we're going to use them as diagrams and that's what we're getting into today. Eventually, we're gonna get into things called free body diagrams where we look at forces, where are the forces pointing and how heavy they are. So these vectors are the beginning building blocks of something we're going to be talking about a lot. So let's get into it. Here's an example of a vector for you. Notice that there is an arrow, and that arrow is represented by a certain quantity. In this case, the distance means 20 meters, maybe displacement it represents, but also notice that it has a direction. But unlike up, down, left, right, north, south, east, or west, this one's a little bit more specific. It actually has a degree angle to it of 30 degrees. So when you look at a compass, north, east, south, and west, we can use those cardinal directions to help better explain to someone what direction something going at. So since this is 30 degrees, it's not just randomly 30 degrees, but it's actually 30 degrees, and let me change my color here, it's 30 degrees west of the north line on the graph. So again, since this line heads west of the north cardinal direction, we can say it's 30 degrees west of the north line. So we're gonna get more used to that, which is going to allow us to not only give the quantity or magnitude that a vector equals, but also its actual direction. Now some rules to keep in mind when drawing vectors. When we draw vectors, we want to make sure that we're using a scale. So the length of the vector represents its magnitude. That just means that a vector that's worth more should be longer than a vector that's worth less. So say for example, the vector represents velocity. A 20 meter per second velocity vector should be twice as long as a 10 meter per second velocity vector. Also, when we draw vectors, we always start with a tail and end with a head. So the actual arrow of a vector is called a head and the beginning of a vector is called a tail. And keep in mind that direction matters. So if there's an angle, we have to draw it at the appropriate angle. When we talk about vectors and the angle, there's two ways we can do it. One of the ways is just counterclockwise from the x-axis. So for example, this one, is just 40 degrees because it's 40 degrees north of the east line. But if it was further than 90 degrees and went all the way around, this would rotate at 240 degrees from the east line. Now, for me personally, I'm not a big fan of that. I like to go from taking the angle from the nearest cardinal direction. Let me explain on the next one. The other way is just relation to the nearest axis. So for example, that one that we did a couple slides back was west of north. So this angle right here, whatever degree it is, would be west of north. But what if you had an angle over here? Notice that it's south of the east line. So say this was 60 degree angle right here, we would say it's 60 degrees south of the east line. So we'd say S of E for south of east, something we're going to get used to as well. Now, when we start adding vectors, it is important. Always draw the first vector that you have, the proper length, and of course, the proper angle or orientation. When you add vectors, you always go from head to tail. So that means that the end or head of this vector touches up to the tail of this one. Then after the second vector, if you're going to add a third, the tail, I'm sorry, the head of the second vector touches the tail of the third vector. And notice they all have different angles associated with them. You have to honor those angles. But when you add them up, it's always head to tail, head to tail. And then from there, you can finally find the answer or what we're going to learn next slide called the resultant, 
where we're gonna start at the beginning and then go a straight line to the very end and call that our resultant. Let's learn about that. When we add up two or more vectors, the answer is going to be resultant. A lot of times I'll use the letter R to show that. And the resultant is always a straight line from the very beginning, the tail of the first vector, and then all the way to the head of the final vector. Now that straight line and that length will represent the vector's magnitude. And then of course, we'll look at the direction as well. So if it has a certain degree angle, like this one does, it has a seven degrees and it is south of the east line, we can say that. All right, this resultant is 50 meters in length and it's set, found seven degrees south of the east line. So that's how we describe it. It's got magnitude and it has direction. So it's a vector. Here's a quick example. If you have the vector going north and an 11 kilometer vector going east, when you add them up, 11 north, tail and head go together, 11 east, the resultants would be start at the tail of the first, draw a line, arrow straight to the head of the second, and then you have your resultant. Don't forget, you could also find your degree angle, so you could also say what direction it's in. If we want to look at an example problem, say a plane is flying north 80 kilometers per hour. So say this is my scale, 80 kilometers per hour, and I encounter a tailwind of another 20, I would add them up, so that'd be 20 kilometers per hour. My total resultant, 80 plus 20, would be 100 kilometers per hour, and it would be going north for my direction. Notice in this case, I didn't use a degree because it's just straight north. No need for a degree if it's straight north, south, east, or west. Now, this example is a little different. If I'm flying north at 80 kilometers per hour, and I have a crosswind that's 20 kilometers east, that's gonna be a different velocity. So here we go, I'm gonna draw my vector. This one is the 80 kilometers north, and now I'm going to add to that my vector of 20 kilometers per hour going east, so notice I do it head to tail. So now they are added up. I'm going to have to look for my resultants, which starts at the tail of the first and ends at the head of the second. So here's my resultant. And from there, if I figure out the length of this resultant, I can put the number value that it represents. And I can also figure out the angle and degree. Now I can do this two ways. If I'm using a ruler and everything's to scale, I can measure and figure it out. Or I can eventually get into using trig and Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared, since R in this case is the hypotenuse of a triangle. I could figure it out that way. And then using sine, cosine, or tangent, I could figure out the angle as well, but eventually figure out the resultant. But in the end, the most important thing for right now is that I started at the tail of the beginning vector and straight line ended at the head of the final vector for the sum, and that will give me the resultant. Quick look ahead, I found the resultant, which was on an angle, but sometimes you're gonna end up with the angle and you'll be able to break apart into the components of the X and the Y vectors. That's gonna become more and more important if we start launching things like in this unit on projectiles. Maybe we'll launch something at 50 meters per second on an angle. You're going to need to figure out horizontally what that vector would equal to show how far it will go left to right, but also how high it will go and looking at the vector up and down. So when something's on an angle, we can always break it apart into its X or horizontal component and it's Y, it's vertical, vertical component. We'll get to that later. For right now, let's just focus on a resultant, adding up vectors so we can get more comfortable with it. Thanks for hanging in there, physics fam. Best of luck. Reach out in class if you need any help.